Hi, I'm Zell, and this is a video that complements the responsive web typography rules that I've wrote for Net Magazine. In this video, I'm going to take you through what my code looks like in the actual production. We'll be looking at a snapshot of the design of my blog, which actually looks like this, but this is what I'm going to show you. So essentially, what, we are, what I'm going to show you is just a stripped down version without the navigation column. In this very quick demo, you can take a look at how the code actually looks like on the production environment and see that it's not hard to make typography responsive. Without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what the HTML looks like. If you take a look at the HTML over here, right now I'm using Nunjux. This basically tells Nunjux to create the head section and the body section, all the other extra stuff. But what we are really interested in is the body, the main parts over here, which makes up the article. The first thing I want to point your attention to is that I have this LREP class that contains the max maximum width of the entire website. Then I have an article. The article has a title, it has some meta, it has a date, and there is also article body where the actual content lies in. Now let's go to the CSS side of things. All right. In my CSS, um, I have, I always begin by importing all my libraries, followed by my variables, then the mix -in, mixins and functions, and finally the rest of the stuff that I'm going to show you. The things I'm going to show you are so short that I can put it into a shame file and show you from that. So let's take a look at what goes into the library first. In my libraries, um, I always import normalize.css because that's important to normalize browser differences. Then I include the other libraries like uh, Mappy Breakpoints, which is, which is a breakpoint library that allows me to write breakpoints easily. Then the things I introduced in the article, Typey, which is a responsive typography library that I've built and also modular scale, which is insanely useful to calculate modular scales. Now, the, I'm going to skip right ahead to the shame. And as we go through the code, if we see any variables that we need to have, I'm going to redirect you back to the variable files instead. All right, so let's go to shame right now. All right, you can see that I first began by setting type e breakpoint to map e breakpoint in my shame file. What this does is it converts um, breakpoints into amped when I use it when I use type e with the library that I've created, map e breakpoints. So I always write EM based media queries. You should always be you should always be writing media queries in EM, um, but that's not the emphasis of what we're gonna talk about today. What we're going to talk about starts from HTML and further on. So let's take a look. Right off the bat, you can see that in my HTML, I've included this thing called type e base. Now, what does that do? What type e does is it creates font sizes and line height from a variable called type e, which is a size map. Without any breakpoints, my font size will be 70 pixels and a line height of 1.4. Then as we go along at medium, wide, mega, and ultra breakpoints, I increment the sizes as we talked about in the article. So to make sure that it's easy to read no matter which, which device um, the reader is reading on. So what it does is it takes the breakpoints from the variable, the breakpoints map, and calculates uh, and gets the pixel value from here and output it inside the CSS. So let me just show you what it looks like in the styles.css file. Alright, if you take a look at the HTML, you see that this is the entire code um, font size, line height, then all the different media queries there. Uh, 
If you take a look at the CSS, this is the code that is actually produced. I'm going to take away the extra stuff um, for now and just explain what Typey Base does. What Typey Base does is that it creates the font size and line height variables for all the different breakpoints that we have told it to. So this is 70 pixels and a mean width of 40 amps or medium. It creates a font size of 8.75, that's 19 pixels. If the user puts the puts his um, browser font size to this default, and so on and so forth. So just typey base alone with a map like this, we can configure the number of breakpoints and the font sizes without having to write the extra media queries ourselves. Um, this is what typey base does. Now let's return to um, shame.scss and take a look at all, all the other stuff. All right. One of the more important things I always begin with is um, this is actually in the wrong position. So it should be over here. I always begin by setting a reset. So I reset all my h123456 paragraph and all the other elements to a margin and padding of zero. So I don't have that extra padding or margin. Um, that is not designed by me. Then I change the paddings accordingly whenever I need to. Now let's take a look further down. Here you see that I actually set classes like h1, h2, h3. Um, or next we have the h1 to h6 classes. I specifically use classes for styling over here because it helps to manage typography in larger apps. For example, in this div you can, that you can see over here, I can simply say h6 and everything within it would be a size of h6 without having to worry about the actual t tag that I've given to it. So let's say if I wanted my article to have a smaller size, then you just say h6 on the article as well without having to change the semantic meaningness of using the h1 tag. So if you're managing typography on your website, I highly recommend using this approach. All right, let's move on. Um, next, you'll see that this um, selector, what this basically does is every element that follows after P and every P element that follows after something else, you give it a margin top of one rhythm or one baseline. The VR function is a helper function that I've created within Type P itself to calculate what is one baseline. So in this case, one baseline will always be, if you go back to the typography, it's always going to be 17 pixels times 1.4. So that's the value that we're looking at. Next, we come to the wrapper. So remember earlier we said that there is a max width. I usually use the VR function to calculate the max width, but alternatively, you can just say something like 30 rams and 30 amps, and that would do fine as well. I prefer to use VR because there's this, uh, I'm repeating the white space to a certain number as well. So this is where the repetition comes in in other places that you might not expect it to be. I also repeat it horizontally by doing a padding left and right. So if you resize the browser downwards, you can actually see that there is a padding of one rhythm on the on of one rhythm or one baseline. I like to call it rhythm because um, it's easier for me to call it that way, but it means the same thing. So there's padding of one baseline to the left and to the right, which helps with the repetition as well. Next, in the article, I recreated like h1, h2, and h3 tags with the values that I've populated inside the classes over here. Now, why is this so? Um, to me, this is a special situation where I have to use elements because I'm converting from markdown. I don't have the luxury of going into the article classes and writing classes like 
H2 over here because that will make the markdown much more difficult to work with. So this is how I do it if I need to specify an element. Moving on, now you can see the article I created like margin top, margin bottom, everything is in the rhythm unit. Even if the spaces between these elements are written in uh, multiples of the baseline as well. Oh, I, I realized I forgot to talk about this. So what this does is basically the same as um, type erase, just that it gets from the specific format that you have set it instead of using type e as the variable. So this is basically how I create responsive typography for my websites using the library that I've created. If you don't want to use the library I've created, that's fine as well. Just bear in mind a few responsive typography principles that we have talked about in the article and you'll be fine. Alright, thank you and I hope you enjoyed it.